Mr. Speaker, sir, gainful employment has been defined within our laws. Specifically, Section 26 of the Leadership and Integrity Act has defined what would amount to gainful employment. If I may, Mr. Speaker, sir, Section 26.1 reads, subject to section, subsection 2, a state officer who is serving on a full-time basis shall not participate in any other gainful employment. It then proceeds at subsection 2 to say, in this section, gainful employment means work that a person can pursue and perform for money or other form of compensation or remuneration which is inherently incompatible with the responsibilities of the state office or which results in the impairment of a judgment of a state officer in the execution of the functions of a state office or results in a conflict of interest in terms of section 16. And so to, the, to our response, there has been no assertion that learned senior counsel James Orengo by representing the part, a party before this house has participated in gainful employment. In any case, what evidence has been tendered before this honorable house to speak to that fact? Mr. Speaker, sir, that is a question that has also received judicial interpretation. If I may, in the election petition number three of 2013 filed in the High Court in Busia, similar applications, I mean, a similar application was made, again objecting to the participation of the Honorable James Orengo Senior Counsel in the proceedings in that matter. The judge handling that case interpreted both Article 77 as read with Section 26 of the Leadership and Integrity Act and had this to say at paragraph 23, 28, sorry, that it had been argued that by representing a party in an election petition, the Honorable Senator would be compromising the political neutrality of his office. I would not agree. Section 23 of this act is a provision on political neutrality expected of appointed state officers. Honorable Orengo holds an elective position. Elected members of Senate are politicians. The provisions of Section 23 do not apply uh, to them. So even if it was to be assumed that, the, uh, that by representing the third respondent, Honorable Orengo is pursuing a political agenda, that would not be inimical to his office as a member of the Senate. And so, Mr. Speaker, I submit that unless there is material that will be tabled before this House that by appearing for a party before this House, then the Honorable uh, Mr. James Orengo Senior Counsel would have engaged in, uh, in, in uh, gainful employment, that objection does not stand any merit. Number two, the second test that has been applied by courts is the test around conflict of interest. Again, Mr. Speaker, the, our courts have had occasion to interpret what amounts to conflict of interest. In a case determined by a five-judge bench, a case uh, reported in our laws, that is EKLR 2018, the case of Philomena Mbetemwilu versus the DPP and two, uh, two others, the bench in determining and dismissing a similar application defined conflict of interest as a situation where one is confronted by two different interests so that serving one interest would be against the other. Mr. Speaker, sir, there hasn't been any conflict of interest that has been, even in the least, mentioned by uh, the, uh, the objector to the participation of uh, senior counsel, the Honorable uh, James Orengo. Finally, has there been an indication as to any prejudice that could be occasioned by the participation of uh, the Honorable James Orengo Senior Counsel before this house this afternoon? To the best of my recollection, none has been mentioned. Is counsel, for instance, saying that the participation 
of the Honorable James Orengo before the proceedings in this house would be such that they would fundamentally impair their defense when they get the opportunity to present the case? I'm just asking myself, that has not been said. In any case, Mr. Speaker, sir, if that was to be the case and the fear that has been presented, then as advocates, as counsel, we operate within very clear and defined rules. Those rules are meant to ensure that a party before this house, just like would be a party before any court or any other forum, does not suffer or does not have a compromise to their uh, uh, rights to fair hearing under Article 50. In the absence of any prejudice that has been mentioned before you, we urge that that objection be dismissed. I've also had occasion to look at the case that was uh, referred to by my friend, Mr. Njiru, and with respect, difference or departure between what uh, led to the finding in that decision and what we have before you. The judges, I mean the judge in that specific matter also went on to add that there must also be established a question or a fact of uh, uh, benefit. Again, I reiterate that no indication, no evidence, or even assertion has been presented before this House to suggest that the Honorable uh, James Orengo Senior Counsel has in any way benefited by being in this House participating as counsel. So with that, Mr. Speaker, sir, we urge that that objection be dismissed. I am most obliged. Thank you, Counsel, for His Excellency, the Deputy President. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. In, in brief response to the submissions by my learned friend, there is no denial that has come from the from Counsel's defense that Senior Counsel Honorable James Orengo is here on pro bono basis. That evidence has not been brought. That claim has not been denied. He's therefore here as counsel earning a fee. And that is what section 26. Senior counsel, don't go to that line of argument. If the evidence of him acting pro bono has not been laid on the table, has the evidence of him earning been put on the table? Mr. Speaker, sir, the only presumption... No, we are not going to presume facts. We are not. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am well guided, but may be noted and may go on record that the grounds laid by Section 26, Subsection 2, have not been rebutted by the submissions made by Council in so far as the gainful employment in these proceedings is concerned. Number two, he is here as a governor of Siaya County, not as a senator. And as such, this, the petition number three of 2013 is distinguishable from the fact that he is here as a serving governor. And that is what section 26, subsection 2, speaks to and that is also equally the, the provisions of 